The Great Fire of London. Chapter One. It is the year sixteen sixty six. London is an old city, with lots of narrow streets. A lot of people are ill because there are rats in all the streets and the houses. One evening, a baker, Thomas Farriner, and his daughter, Harriet, are making bread. It is late. We must work quickly, says Thomas. We need this bread for the king in the morning. Just then, Mary, the baker's maid, comes in. You're late, Mary, says Thomas. Sorry, Mr. Farriner, says Mary. Thomas, Harriet, and Mary make bread for two hours. Then, Mr. Farriner's wife, Anne, calls down to them. Time for bed, girls, she says. We're just finishing, says Harriet. Harriet and Mary. Go up to bed. Thomas takes the bread from the oven. Good. The fire is nearly out now. Thinks Thomas. Thomas calls Anne. What are you doing? It's very late. Thomas goes up to bed. But he doesn't close the oven door. An hour later, the baker's shop is on fire. Wake up, girls! Wake up! cries Anne. The house is on fire. Quick, open the window. Says Thomas, "Let's go up on the roof." Thomas jumps to the house next door. Anne and Harriet follow him, but Mary stays on the roof of the baker's shop. Jump over, over here! here! They all cry. Jump! I can't," says Mary. "I'm afraid." Chapter Two. People come out of their houses. They all look up at Mary. They cry. I can't," says Mary. "Please help me." "I'm going back," says Thomas. "We can't leave her. Wait here." "Don't go, Thomas," cries Anne. "Look, now this house is on fire too." Just then, someone brings a ladder. Thomas, Anne, and Harriet quickly climb down. Ten minutes later, oh, mother, says Harriet. Poor Mary, she's she's dead. Don't cry, my love," says her mother. 
Look at our shop, our things, our home, says Thomas. We have nothing. What can we do now? There is a strong wind, and the fire spreads quickly to more houses in Pudding Lane. Where, Where are, are the, the firefighters? Everybody asks. Just then, twenty firefighters arrive. They begin to put water on the fire. Bring more water! They cry. We need more water now! But the fire is out of control, and soon all the houses in Pudding Lane are on fire. The people in the street begin to ask, "Where is the Lord Mayor of London?" He's asleep in bed," says an old man. "We want the Lord Mayor!" cry the people. "Go and find the Lord Mayor. He lives in Maiden Lane." Says the chief firefighter to a boy, "He must come quickly." What can we do? Asks Anne. We can't stay here. Let's go down to the River Thames. Cries Thomas. Follow me. Chapter Three. In a different part of London, Samuel Pepys is asleep in his bed. Pepys works for the government. At home, he writes a diary every day. Pepys has a maid. Called Jane. At three o'clock in the morning, she comes to his room. Wake up, sir! She says. There's a fire in the city. Peeps goes to the window, and looks out across London. It isn't a big fire. He says to Jane, "I'm going back to bed. Good night." An hour later, Jane comes back. Sir, there are more than three hundred houses on fire. She cries. Peeps jumps out of bed. He quickly puts on his clothes. I must go to the Tower of London, says Pepys. I can see everything from there. Near the tower, Pepys meets his good friend, Richard Moore. What's happening? Asks Peeps. It's very bad news, says Moore. There's a big fire down near the river. Everybody says it's out of control. They climb up the hill to the tower. It is now six o'clock in the morning. Big clouds of smoke are beginning to spread across London. Bells are ringing from every church in the city. 
listen to those bells, says Moore. And look, some of the houses near London Bridge are now on fire. Let's run down to the River Thames, cries Peeps. Perhaps we can help the people there. Chapter 4 Peeps and Moor arrive at the river. Crowds of people are running down to the river bank. The fire is now in the next street. Families leave their houses with their hands full. They are carrying their things away from the fire. Everybody wants a boat on the river. Over here! cries a young man to the people in the boats. I'm first, says an old woman. Three people climb quickly into one of the boats. It is the Fariner family from Pudding Lane. It's Thomas Fariner from Pudding Lane cries a man in the crowd. Tell us about the fire in your baker's shop. Thomas is frightened. I... I'm not a baker, he says. I have a flower shop in Cat Street. The Fariner family leave quickly and go down the river in the boat. Peeps and Moore walk nearer to the fire. There are clouds of smoke and thousands of rats are in the streets. They are running from the burning houses. Just then they meet 20 firefighters outside a burning building. They are putting water on the fire, but it is spreading quickly. Can you stop the fire? Peeps asks the chief firefighter. It's no good, he answers. There's nothing we can do. But you must blow up the buildings in front of the fire says Peeps. Then it can't spread to different parts of the city. But we need to ask Thomas Bloodworth, the Lord Mayor, says the chief firefighter. Where is he? asks Peeps. Nobody knows, he answers. What can we do? shouts Moore. We must speak to the king, says Peeps. Come on, let's find a boat. We can go up the river to Whitehall Palace. Perhaps we can speak to the king there. Peeps and Moore go quickly up the River Thames. It is 11 o'clock in the morning, but the sky is black with clouds of smoke. The wind is stronger and many streets are now on fire. The houses on London Bridge are burning fast and people are jumping into the river. Chapter 5 They arrive 
at the Palace of Whitehall. We're here to see the king, says Peeps at the front door. What's your name? asks the guard. Samuel Peeps. Wait here, sir, says the guard. A crowd of men is standing outside the door. They are all talking excitedly. We must wait for rain, says one old man. No, we must bring more water from the river, says a young man. But we need more firefighters to do that, cries a third man. What do you two think? The young man calls to Peeps and Moor. Peeps walks over to the crowd of men. There is only one solution, he says. We must blow up the buildings in front of the fire. Suddenly, everybody goes. Quiet. Blow up the buildings in front of the fire, says the young man. He is surprised. Yes, that's right, says Peeps. Just then, the guard cries, "The king wants to see Samuel Peeps." Now, Peeps. Is surprised. Peeps goes into the king's room. Your Majesty, this is Samuel Peeps, says the guard. Good morning, Mr. Peeps, says the king. I hear you have news about the fire. Is this true? Yes, Your Majesty," says Peeps. "The fire is now out of control, Your Majesty," says Peeps. "We must do something very quickly." But what? asks the King. "The firefighters must blow up the houses in front of the fire." Says Peeps. Yes, cries the king. That's the solution. We must blow up the houses. Then the fire can't spread. The king writes a letter. Give this letter to Thomas Bloodworth, the Lord Mayor. He says. Nobody can find him," says Peeps. "You must find him," says the king. "Take one of my coaches. Go quickly back to the fire, and find the Lord Mayor," says the king. Peeps and Moor. Go outside at once, and jump into the king's coach. <laughs> Peeps is carrying the king's letter. They drive madly through the narrow streets. Faster, faster! Calls Peeps to the coach driver. Chapter Six. In the end, Peeps finds the Lord Mayor. Ah, here you are! Peeps cries angrily. Everybody is looking for you. Hello, Peeps, says the Lord Mayor. 
I'm very tired. I must sit down. Here is a letter from the king, says Peeps. You must blow up the buildings in front of the fire. I know, says the Lord Mayor. I want to pull down houses near the fire, but nobody listens to me. People don't want to lose their homes. Just then, some of the king's soldiers arrive. Lord Mayor, we are here to blow up houses," says one of the soldiers. "Yes," says the Lord Mayor. "Good luck. I'm going home now. I'm tired and dirty, and I want to change my clothes." But, Lord Mayor, wait! Call the soldiers. Goodbye, says the Lord Mayor. The men blow up some houses, but they are very near to the fire. It's no good, says Peeps. To the soldiers, you must blow up buildings one street away from the fire. The soldiers pull down houses and blow up shops. It is now nine o'clock on Sunday evening. Peeps and Moore go home. For three more days, the Great Fire of London burns. Frightened people and hungry rats run madly through the streets. The fire spreads. To the most important houses and churches in the city, Old Saint Paul's Cathedral burns day and night. Day after day, the firefighters and soldiers work to stop the fire. On the fourth day, the wind. Changes direction, and the fire slowly stops. The firefighters stand and watch for the first time in days. Many people come back to look for their houses and shops, but they find nothing. At home, Peeps. Begins to write about the fire in his diary. He knows the government must work a lot to help the people of London. Five days later, Peeps and Moore climb up the tower of the last church in the centre of London. They look over the city. What a black day," says Peeps. Over thirteen thousand houses, ninety churches, and now there is nothing. Don't feel bad about that," says Moore. Instead, let's remember something important. Only nine people are dead. Fifty years later, London is a very different city. There are no more old, narrow streets in the city centre, but beautiful, wide streets instead. And a new Saint Paul's Cathedral 
stands not far from the banks of the River Thames. But the most important thing is there are no more rats.